Earth is one of the most unique planets known to humankind. The Earth's atmosphere, magnetic field, and distance from the Sun and other planets in our galaxy are just a few of the elements that make it a perfect place for life to thrive. All around the world, incredibly diverse life forms flourish in equally diverse ecosystems. From the jungles of the Amazon, to the polar ice caps, to the African savanna, and the coral triangle. Welcome to Wild Classroom. My name is Rachel, and today we're headed on a virtual field trip to explore the sights and sounds of the grassland ecosystem known as the Northern Great Plains. With the help of a few WWF experts, we'll learn about some of the plants, animals, and people that make the Northern Great Plains so special. Glad you could come along. Let's go. Hey, wait for me. Oh, hey there, it's Clay from WWF. I heard you were here for a field trip and I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to come along. We're so happy to have you join us. You're just in time. Clay, a little bumblebee told me that you know a thing or two about the Northern Great Plains. Could you tell us more about where we are today? Sure. Right now, we're looking over an area made up of more than 180 million acres of healthy grassland habitat, known as the Northern Great Plains. This habitat crosses Montana, Wyoming, Nebraska, North Dakota, South Dakota, and parts of Canada. While we're looking at the map, do you notice how the Missouri River intersects many of the states that make up the Northern Great Plains? This river and its tributaries play a critical role in supporting wildlife and people since it helps to distribute water throughout the region, bringing fresh water to cities like Omaha, Nebraska, and into the Gulf of Mexico where it helps sustain fisheries. This is essential since this area typically doesn't get a lot of rain. A lack of rain is actually one of the characteristics of a grassland. Because there isn't much rain, and because of the many species of grazing animals, it makes it difficult for trees to grow in great numbers. Instead, there are a variety of grasses, shrubs, and wildflowers that can withstand extreme weather events such as drought, heavy snow, and fire, while helping to support the variety of life found here. There are two main types of grasslands, tropical and temperate. Tropical grasslands are like those found in the savannas of Africa, while the grasslands of the Northern Great Plains are temperate, the Northern Great Plains is one of the world's last remaining healthy temperate grasslands. Grasslands are often thought of as not being as colorful or full of life as other ecosystems. But the Northern Great Plains are actually full of life, hidden in plain sight. Let's take a closer look. Here we have some beautiful bison. Wow, they're so big. How much does something that large weigh? Why don't we ask our fellow adventurers, what do you think a bison can weigh as much as? A bike? A car? A school bus? A plane? If you answered car, you're correct. The bison is actually the largest land mammal in North America, with males weighing up to 2,000 pounds. Did you know they're actually the national mammal of the United States? Pretty cool. Is it true that there used to be many more bison freely roaming North America than today? It is. In the 16th century, there were an estimated 30 million bison in North America. However, bison were nearly pushed to extinction by the late 1800s, bringing their population down to less than 1,000. That's terrible. What caused such a decline in their population? During the time of Western expansion, Settlers wanted to take the land that had belonged to Native Americans for centuries. The U.S. government knew that bison were really important to Native people, particularly across the Great Plains. The bison provided them with food, clothing, fuel, tools, shelter, and they were spiritually important too. Those looking to expand westward killed bison by the thousands so that Native people could no longer depend upon them. This forced the Native people to make the difficult decision to relocate to reservations, allowing their traditional lands to be taken by homesteaders. Thankfully, today, the bison have made a comeback. With the help of Native nations, government partners, bison ranchers, and conservation organizations, there are roughly 31,000 wild bison roaming across North America. An additional 400,000 bison are being raised as livestock. I'm so glad they're making a comeback. Bison are not only an important part of Native American culture, but they are important for the overall grassland ecosystem as well. As grazers, they nibble on grass and other plants, 
which keeps them healthy and supports the biodiversity of the region. Speaking of grazers, is that a pronghorn I see? You're right, it is. Pronghorn are migrating species that follow the same paths year after year. They look kind of like antelope, but are actually ancient relatives of the giraffe. Did you also know that they are North America's fastest land mammals, reaching speeds of up to 60 miles per hour? Impressive. I wonder what other species are out today. Let's listen for a moment and see what we can hear. Do you hear that chirp? I do. What kind of bird is that? That's not a bird. It's a prairie dog. Prairie dogs live in underground communities and are very communicative with one another. In fact, scientists have learned that they have a complex language with special sounds for predators and other species that they encounter. Right now, they could be alerting each other to our presence, or perhaps a black-footed ferret is lurking nearby. Black-footed ferrets are rare mammals that prey upon prairie dogs. They help keep the prairie dog population in balance and are an indicator species, which means that as a top predator, their population data helps scientists determine how healthy the ecosystem is. If there are high numbers of black-footed ferrets, it means the ecosystem is thriving. Well, they may be predators, but they're very cute. Hey, look over there. It's a pair of greater sage grouse. It looks like we got here just in time for the big dance. Male greater sage grouse like to put on a show to attract female partners. Let's see how they strut their stuff. It's so cool to get to see these species across the landscape. What about the ones we can't see so easily, though, like insects? Now you're talking. As a bee and bug lover, my work allows me to study all kinds of insects, as well as the wildflower and grass species they live amongst. Many insects are known as pollinators, which help fertilize plants by carrying pollen that sticks to their bodies as they move from plant to plant. Let's check with our adventurers again. Which of these insects do you think are pollinators? Bees, wasps, butterflies, all of the above. It's all of the above! The pollinating behavior of organisms such as butterflies, wasps, and my personal favorites, bees, enables the growth of the fresh, juicy fruits and crisp, vibrant vegetables that we eat to maintain a healthy body and mind. Did you know that we have over 4,000 species of bees here in North America? Listen to them get to work! These pollinators are supported by all kinds of beautiful flowers and grasses with an important role to play in the ecosystem. Wildflowers and grasses provide food and shelter for other insects, birds, amphibians, and many more. But the role of wildflowers and grasses doesn't just exist above the ground. Beneath our feet is a whole other world that wildflowers and grasses support. Their deep roots help improve soil health and water quality. Healthy soil is critical to a healthy ecosystem, since it can store water, helping to provide for plants and animals, collect carbon, keeping it out of our atmosphere, and provide a home for decomposers like dung beetles and microscopic bacteria that help recycle nutrients to keep soil healthy so the rich biodiversity of the land can be maintained. That's right, but healthy grasslands depend on more than just biodiversity. Around 77% of the Northern Great Plains is privately owned land, including more than over 904 million acres of intact grassland. Many of the landowners are ranchers who raise grazing livestock. Some of the families have been ranching their land for more than 150 years and have learned the importance of working with nature to maintain the health of their land and the success of their businesses. Working with ranchers to conserve these intact grasslands create habitat for a broad diversity of birds and a suite of grassland wildlife species. For hundreds of generations, Native Americans have taken good care of the Northern Great Plains and deeply understand and respect the relationship between people and nature. Let's call in one of our experts, Monica, who can tell us more about this relationship. Hi, Monica. Thanks so much for joining us for our virtual field trip today. Tahaya, yahi. Welcome. Hi. It's nice to see you all. My name is Monica Radlingcock. I am an indigenous citizen of the Ogallala Lakota Nation. 
one of the tribes of the Ocheti Shakonwi, or seven council fires. I am indigenous to this landscape, just as all the relatives you have been visiting. I work with native communities in the Northern Great Plains through my role with World Wildlife Fund. As indigenous people, we have been on this landscape for thousands of years. We have made ceremony, song, and dance from our connections to all life in the Northern Great Plains and have made relatives to all that you see and hear. I call it ecosystem relationships. We consider ourselves only one part of many parts and what affects one affects all. Today, there are many imbalances. We have forgotten our connections and to give back. We have learned to take and take. As relatives, we need to regain relationships and work together to have a connected space once again. Unchimaka, Grandmother Earth, a living being gives freely and supports all that we need to live. The Root Nation sustains the roots in Unchimaka and provides a protective relationship and connects to us and all that live within and upon Unchimaka. Let us honor the grasses and also speak to the air as they sustain the very soil they come from and sustain so many life forms and are seen as far as the eye can see. You're right, Monica. Humans have put a lot of stress on nature over the years. What are some things you'd recommend we do to help nature? Something we can all do to help is plant native wildflower species in our own backyards, community gardens, or in reusable pots on a porch or balcony. Collecting and spreading seeds of plants that have medicinal values such as sage, a natural antibiotic, or echinacea, also known as coneflower, which is an immunity builder for humans can provide medicine for us and food for pollinators. As I walk in the badlands, I harvest many medicines and seeds. I give acknowledgement and give back and hope to see one day my trail sustaining many relatives and many connections. I also recommend you find ways to connect with nature around you. The more we understand all that nature provides us and how humans and nature are connected, the more we can do to protect life on our planet. Even if you don't live near a grassland, the actions we take in our daily lives can have a big impact both near and far. Thanks for sharing your perspective, Monica, and reminding us of the important connectivity that humans have with nature. Doksha ake wachinke, which means we'll see you all later. In order to have a healthy future where both people and nature thrive, we need to be mindful of our actions that put regions like the Northern Great Plains at risk. To keep up with the growing human population and food demand, habitats around the world are being cut down and plowed to make room to grow crops. Grasslands like the Northern Great Plains are particularly at risk because their nutrient-rich soil makes them well-suited for farming. When the natural habitat is plowed up, the wildlife that depend on healthy grasslands like pronghorn and pollinators, have no place to live. We can even hear the difference it makes. In addition, large agricultural operations use pesticides and fertilizers, which can kill the native plants and wildlife, pollute the local waterways, cause soil erosion, and release carbon into the atmosphere, which contributes to climate change. That's right. Climate change is also disturbing grassland ecosystems. Changes in rainfall impact the soil's health, which has a domino effect on the grasses and wildflowers and all the species that depend on them. Migration and breeding seasons for many grasslands animals are also being harmed as environmental changes are becoming more and more unpredictable. As we've seen today, Ecosystems like the Northern Great Plains rely on many things working together to maintain the health of all those living within the system, including us. We all need to help protect the Northern Great Plains, as it is one of the world's last remaining intact temperate grasslands and a critical ecosystem for humans, wildlife, and plants. Thanks for joining us today on this virtual trip through the Northern Great Plains. What will you do after this field trip to help protect the Northern Great Plains? To learn more about this region and how you can help protect grasslands, visit us at wildclassroom.org. 
see you later. Bye. Thanks for joining us.